Today we're looking at why did they wear wigs in the 1700s? Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Also, don't forget to check out dailybellringer.com where you'll find more resources that go with many of the Bell Ringer videos. When looking at paintings of the Founding Fathers as they signed the Declaration of Independence or debated the Constitution at the Constitutional Convention in 1787, you'll notice something most, if not all, of the Founders had in common. They wore wigs. And not just any wig, but fairly large white wigs. But why? They lived in a time when there was no air conditioning, so wearing wigs had to be very hot and uncomfortable. This is a question a lot of students ask me, so I thought I would make a video here to explain why they wore wigs. Wigs were known as perukes, and actually had been worn for quite some time throughout Europe prior to the Founding Fathers putting their wigs on. Since medicine was primitive and many people suffered from diseases that caused sores and scars, wigs were used as a way to cover up those blemishes. But in the mid-1600s, King Louis XIII came to power in France, and it's said that by the age of 17, King Louis already had thinning hair. So in an effort to cover up his baldness, Louis hired over 40 wig makers to start making him wigs to wear on a daily basis. A few years later, King Charles II of England began going gray. So to cover up his aging, he began to wear wigs as well. Now two of the most powerful men in all of Europe were regularly wearing wigs, and so all of the elite wealthy class citizens wanted wigs as well. Wigs became a symbol of status and were seen as acceptable dress for men at formal occasions. Furthermore, the wigs helped to address a practical problem for people living in the 1600s and 1700s. Head lice was fairly common, and the only way to ensure not getting lice was to shave your head. In order for perukes to fit properly, usually the person wearing it would need to shave their head. So now the problem of lice could be resolved by simply getting a wig. But there was one other problem, the smell. The perukes were usually made from horse or goat hair and were very difficult to clean. So after a few times of wearing a wig on a hot summer day, the wig had a very strong odor and would draw flies and other insects. So in order to combat the pests that the wigs would draw in, people began to powder their wigs. The powder they used was generally very finely ground up starch and lavender to try to make the wigs smell better. Now, contrary to popular belief, not all of the Founding Fathers wore powdered wigs. In fact, George Washington refused to wear a wig, and he mostly grew his hair long and tied it in a ponytail in the back. However, on very formal occasions, Washington would powder his reddish hair in order to look more dignified and proper. For the most part, Thomas Jefferson did not wear a wig, and too would grow his hair long. Jefferson did adopt wearing wigs more when he was an ambassador for America and France. John Adams, who was bald, wore a wig, and there was even stories of him throwing his wig on the floor and stomping on it when he was upset. James Madison, the primary author of the Constitution, too, was known to regularly wear a wig. But in the late 1700s to early 1800s, wearing wigs began to fall out of fashion. In France, the French Revolution basically put to an end wig wearing because it was seen as a symbol of the elite and wealthy class. Also in England in 1795, new taxes were put on wigs, which made them more expensive and less people were willing to pay for them. In America, James Monroe would be the last president inaugurated while wearing a wig. The white powdered wig, although basically a fashion statement, will forever be recognized by Americans as part of the founding of the nation. So hopefully that explains a little bit of why the founders wore wigs. And so with that, hopefully you learned something, and thanks for watching.